Okay, welcome to another Developer Diaries. Uh, today we're going to go over some of the new features in Valence 6 for Metro App Builder uh, charts and forms. That's correct, right, Sean? You got it, yep. Okay, I'm just going to log in real quick. Uh, what do you think? Just go over the charts first? Sure. Yeah, let's just go to the charts. All right. Okay, so I already created a couple data sources, so we don't have to walk through that. We can just use them. So uh, this is just inventory value based on what we currently have for the current date, year, and month. So let's start looking at the charts. Okay, so in Valence 6, you're going to you're going to notice that there are some new options for charts. I think each chart has new options, but uh, let's start with the bar chart. I think once we go through a couple of the options, they're pretty much the same across the board. But so I'm just going to pick my data field, which would be the current value, and the label field would be the item class. Okay, pretty much looks the same as 5.2, 5.2 plus. However, when we go to UI, you're gonna see some new options. And so for the data access or the label, you can do some special formatting. Um, some of this is gonna look very familiar to the grid. I'll just start from the left here. So this is just font, like size. So let's just say extra large for right now, just so we see what happens. And that was on the data. So you can see that our values now, that font changed. I remove it, go back. It's gonna go back to the default. So you can control that. Um, you can make it bold, italics, you could rotate the text. Um, the other thing you can do is, this is just the standard formatting as you're used to seeing on the grid for each grid column. So in this instance, yeah, it is money. So I'm just gonna choose the money renderer. And you're gonna see it now is has that format. Before we really didn't have any formatting, so it was just the, the raw value that you had. Um, and you can also, just like the grid, do your own custom formatting. You receive the value and you can return what you want it to show. And that's on the data. And it's gonna be the same across the label too. So the label I could come here and say, uh, large, bold, sure. And now it's got a different font size and it's bolded. Keep that bold for now. And the same thing here, you can do your own formatting, whatever would make sense and or custom formatting. We also have that same option on tooltips. So when you hover, it shows your value and your label. However, you can say, well, I want that value to be formatted because it is money in the tooltip. And now when I hover, I see that format. And again, you can do some styling and of course the, your own custom renderer, which would, this would be in JavaScript. You would just return whatever you need it to be just like on the grid. And we have the same thing on display value. So if you want to show the value by default, it shows it, but it shows it in its raw format like it did before. However, again, you can apply renderers to that. And the same with And again, the same thing, your own custom if you wanted to. The other thing we've added in charts would be colors, which is the same thing that we're used to in the grid too, which is you can add your own rules. So we still have the base choose your color. We didn't remove that. So if you decided to say, I just want it to be red, um, it will take that just like it was before. However, you can choose to Let's say hardware is uh, less than 300,000. So. so this colors tab would really be based on your data, right? Where you right. Use based on certain values. 
Yeah, so what we'll do is I guess we'll, we'll say, okay, if the current amount is less than we want to make it red. So now, so that gives us a little, you everyone a little bit more control over the charts. Um, and you're gonna see these, these options across the board and majority of the charts, okay? Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything left on charts here. No, I think that's it. We do have, let me go to, let me create a pie on this. Where's my pie? So it's the same, if I choose tooltip, I can say, okay, well, it's gonna be a value of money. So then it would show that raw amount as before. Um, this has just been pushed out, this polar. Um, so it becomes a polar chart based off the pie. Um, and you can also choose to display its value if you wanted to. And this one also has the colors, just like the other bar chart. I wonder if it's worth mentioning too that if 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 you for some reason so by default when you install Valence Six, all of these options on the charts will be available. Um, but if for some reason you don't see it, um, there is a setting in in Portal Administration because all these charts that you're seeing are actually entirely new. And we um, created a new setting to go back to the old legacy charts, we're calling them. So if you have that option on, you won't see all of the new options. Correct. And the reason this was kind of like a, a, a fail safe, right, for us, the legacy charts switching back in case there's some kind of issue that we didn't foresee during development and testing. Um, but the, I guess the roadmap would say that this, this setting would disappear, right? Exactly, yeah, the goal is to get rid of that. So no, you know, we don't need to depend on the charts from 5.2 or before that. Right. And I think that pretty much the rest of, uh, rest of it is, the charts look the same, I guess there one doesn't, um, I need to create, how would I, I need a, probably a data field to create a gauge though. I don't have a, yeah, I don't have any good values for a gauge. What would I want to put there? Um, I'm, trying think, I'm trying to think of a data source I could quickly create if there was something for, just to show the gauge. Oh, you just need what, a value, just a single value? I think that's all, yeah, it's all, that's all you need, I, yeah. Maybe just do a select count on a file or something. Forget your from. Thank you. So you have the, you know, this looks a little different than the, the old one. Um, and it has that same thing where you can do formatting on the data itself, the uh, display value, you have your padding like that. Um, and you can still do like max value. So we, you know, I could say it's a thousand or something. Um, so yeah, it just looks a little different than the old one. I think that's pretty much it. I mean, I could, I think going through every chart, they're all gonna look the same outside of that mm -hmm. gauge. 
It's just that they're going to have those options that we kind of just spoke about, which we kind of tried to keep across the board when, when we could based on the chart, the colors. All right, Sean, did you want to go over the forms? Sure. Do you want me to drive or you want me, you just going to take over? Uh, it's up to you. I mean, I've got some code that I could, I could just paste in the chat when we need it, or I can do it. My, it's up to you. Yeah, I can just, I'll just stop my share. You can share. Okay. Oh, it says host to save. Oh, hold on. I got to add that, that new security. Try it now. <clears throat> Okay, let me know if you can see my screen. We can. Okay, so I'm just gonna go over this customer's data source and create a form. <clears throat> so I guess let me just start off just uh, getting the fields that I want in here. And we'll just go here. Okay, so nothing, nothing new here. Um, What's new is this, this column here where we have this, this formatting and this custom formatting. Actually, I shouldn't say that. This formatting has always been here, but now there's a few additional options. So just like you saw on the charts, I can alter my font size. So let's say I'll make the customer name extra large and bold. Let me just remove this label. Okay. So now I'm gonna take I'm going to create a field group here. I'll just take a, the city state and zip and make those all in one line. Okay. Fields, let me just get rid of, uh, just call this address. Okay, so, you know, every, everything except for this, you know, you can do in the previous form, but like, like looking at this address, this looks, you know, it doesn't look great because like this address too really should be right along with this. And we'd probably want all of these together as well, just as one address. So what I can do is I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to remove all these fields because I'm just going to combine them into one using the custom formatting. So let me just grab some code here, which you know what? I don't have the code for it. <laughs> so I'm just going to create these variables. So address one. So it's just like the grid renderer. You get the value and then the record. So address two rec.get c-a-d-d-r-2, get the city, get c-city, state, rec.get c-state, and last, I'll get the zip as well. C and I'm just going to create, I mean, you could do this any way you want. This is just how I prefer to do it. I just like creating like a little HTML markup here. So div, you know, and then I'm going to put address one in here, creating, you know, what's known as a kind of like a template. Then I want another div. So any HTML markup is valid in here. So that'll be address one, address two. Then I'm going to want city comma space state space zip now i can just turn so i'm you know because we have ext in our namespace i can use this but like i said you know you could build this string manually or you know use use anything to to really to create this string but i find this clean um, so I'm just going to say format the string markup and use replacement variables. So I'm passing address one, address two, city, 
state zip. So this is the first, or so this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and it's zero base. So it's going to put address one and zero, address two and one, and, and so forth. So I'll save this and take a look now. Okay, so now it formats it. Maybe I'll just change this a little bit more. I'll, I'll put this address and I'll go here and just remove this label and I'll take a look. Okay, so the point is, is you can do HTML markup in your forms now. Um, I'm going to copy some code and just show you, you know, just, just to give you another idea. I'm going to go back to fields here. I'll remove, remove this and I'll just put some custom markup. So I copied some code and, you know, this is just giving some different styling to that name. Okay. All right. I'm going to, let me just go back there and just if you want to take a look at what we did here. So all I did was we created a div with a bunch of styling and we're just returning the value. So because we can do that, um, you could also now include images in your forms. So let me show an example of that. So I'm going to go back and we have this part master. Let me just go into the data just so you can see it. So each record has a product number, description, a type, class, price, and on hand. Um, we actually have images for each of these parts. Um, and the, the name of the image is actually the product number. So I'm going to rely on that and I'm going to put an image in my form. So let's create a widget. Form. So I'm going to select, I'm going to select nearly everything except this description. So let me just go copy my code here. Okay, so same thing. I'm creating some markup. I'm creating an outer div. And then there's my image. And notice my image. You know, we have a path. Resources, images, nav, samples. And then there's the replacement. We're going to replace it with the product number. And then we just have another div where we have, uh, we're going to pass in the product number again, and then the description right beneath it. So let's just see what this looks like. Okay. So let me just refine this a bit. I'll remove product product number here. And let's create, we'll just, we'll say type class unit of measure. Let me create a field group to hold those. Type class measure. And I'm just going to call this uh, specifications. Or something. Let's just see how we're looking here. Okay. And now I'll put these two into a field group as well. on hand and let me change a couple things price sure on hand quantity um, for the price I'm going to format that money and then this would be a new feature here actually let me let me change this too let me make them make them large I'll make this extra large and then after units. So it'll give a quantity and then units. 
So I think that's really it for form updates. So the main point is, you know, you have new options here, and then you have the ability to create your own markup as well. So you could, you know, literally do whatever you want within that form. Awesome. All right. Sweet. All right, again, yeah, uh, Valence 6.0 is in beta. Um, and like we say in the last session, that will be, we believe moving out of beta, what, like mid and next month, I think it is. Yeah, um, mid September. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna, we're just walking through to give everybody an idea of, of these new features coming that are in Valence 6. Um, if you like, you can download the beta. Um, and yeah, so well, thanks for everybody joining. Do we have a, anybody leaving? Oh, true. okay. All right, I don't think that, I think that's it. We were supposed to go over the charts with all the features added to those and then the new form features. So, all right. All right, well, thanks for everybody joining us and then we'll, uh, we'll be back next, uh, next Friday. Everybody have a good rest of your week. Hi, everyone.